deeply. Um, it was never really intended to be about the meaning of life, and I'm going to have to qualify what I mean by the meaning of life to really kind of make it fit. But if you bear with me, it does. Um, firstly, historically, the poem was a response to the Second World War, and it was kind of a prophecy of what America would become in the wake of that. Um, particularly um, the universities and Harvard in particular, like how they would kind of reintegrate into, you know, their old ways and what the war and their part in it would have, you know, the kind of implications that would have. So it's kind of all to do with that. But um, I still think the poem's relevant today, and not just to America and not just to Harvard, because one of the things that Auden does really well that you probably would have noticed and possibly didn't like because of it. Um, he tends to rely quite heavily on Greek mythology. He brings up Ares as the god of war, he talks about Zeus, he talks about uh, the Olympian gods, he talks about Apollo, he talks about Hermes. And personally, I think that in so doing, in, in borrowing so heavily from the past, he kind of makes it a bit more timeless, makes it a bit more relevant to not just you know, Harvard in 1946, but also, um, you know, today in Britain or wherever. Particularly, I think more Western countries than anything else. Um, so even though it was about we're kind of recovering from the war and America's place, you know, after that, and the institutions their place after that, um, I think it can also apply to this kind of wider question, and basically that is what is the purpose of education? What's the purpose of art? And ultimately, what's the purpose of life? So that's kind of where I'm coming from, um, to say this is about the meaning of life. So anyway, Auden sets up these two ideals, these two ideologies, um, almost caricatures. Um, on the one hand, you've got Apollo, traditionally thought of as the god of light, the sun god, that kind of thing. Um, and on the other hand, you've got Hermes, who traditionally is much more artistic, um, the the god of thieves and liars and poetry, um, but I mean he doesn't rely too heavily on what they actually represent, he kind of makes his own representation of them as well. So the way the gods are represented in this poem, Apollo comes across as pompous, um, he's the prig, Prince Hal, so if you know your Shakespeare, um, Henry IV part 1 and 2 and Henry V, um, Prince Hal was the kind of young upstart prince of um, Henry IV. Um, his son, and he later became Henry V. And he had this um, kind of sidekick in Henry IV Part 1 and 2 that was this um, kind of drunkard, old fool, fool stuff. Anyway, so Apollo is pompous, the prig prince hell, and he's an authoritarian. Um, he's very much a kind of tyrant almost. A very kind of soft, gentle tyrant, kind of one you don't realise is a tyranny almost, but definitely, you know, the boss. And then you've got, on the other hand, Hermes, who's, um, we're told, is precocious, um, the full staff character, the full, and fun-loving. You know, kind of represents the more kind of sensual, you know, things to do with just enjoying your life. Um, the more creative god, if you like. So Apollo's followers are portrayed as these jobsworths who will put all of their energies into these meaningless, unfulfilling jobs. You know, they'll... They're the bureaucrats and the ones that rubber stamp pink forms. In fact, there's another poem um, called The Fall of Rome. Um, I'll just quickly give you a line from it. Um, Caesar's double bed is warm as an unimportant clerk writes, I do not like my work on a pink official form. Um, that idea there, the unimportant clerk who shows his dissatisfaction with his job just by writing, I don't like my job on this pink official form and you know rubber stamping it. I mean, that's the kind of Apollo follower. You know, this person is just a job's worth. If you don't know that phrase, a job's worth, then add it to your vocabulary because it, it's a good one. Um, whereas Hermes' followers are the kind of creative ones. They reject authority. Um, they thrive on being kind of disorganised and on that kind of sense of freedom. Um, so a much more kind of archetypal, genuine artist. You know, the stereotype of an art uh, artist anyway. So, basically, for the, f the sort of middle portion of the poem, Auden um, basically attacks the versions of art and education that Apollo sets up. 
um, he talks about in the education system, truth is replaced by useful knowledge and the poetry or the art of the time is over Whitmanated and it doesn't scan and it's adjectives laid end to end. You know, he really attacks that kind of um, the atrocity of that kind of art where it's just, you know, the construction of it is rubbish, the themes are ridiculous, you know, he talks about spousal love and spring and dogs and dusters, you know, all of this just kind of rubbish that gets put in. It extols the donut and commends the common man. You know, it's this kind of celebration of mediocrity that um, Auden's kind of attacking. And if you've ever seen um, a lot of the kind of reality shows that are on nowadays, I think that's kind of taking the celebration of mediocrity and banality to its, you know, logical extreme. So, you know, if Auden was still alive today to see that kind of thing, I think he'd have a... I think he'd still have quite a lot to say about it. Anyway, so... Um, Apollo has kind of manufactured this counterfeit art. You know, he's unable to invent the liar, so he creates with simulated fire official art. It's this kind of counterfeit art. And the rioters, his existentialists, they wear fake hermetic uniforms. So they still, they seem like they're the real thing. You know, you look at it and you think you've got art, but actually it's kind of it, it comes from the establishment. It's this kind of official art. It's not really the driving force behind art. It's just commercial or it's propaganda or you know that kind of thing um, so that kind of art and its concerns you know it breeds an artist that's just completely banal and um, that's basically what Auden, Auden was attacking in this entire poem uh, and his cure for that is at the end you've got these ten commandments for the genuine followers of Hermes the things he calls the Hermetic Decalogue so basically you've got the, the order to shun authority and anybody that takes trivial things too seriously so that's basically you know, what the poem's all about. Um, but I find it particularly interesting today. I mean, even as, as I said, the idea of official art is still relevant today. Um, the idea that the establishment will try to create art that is as meaningful as genuine art. Um, and I don't just mean the establishment as in the government. I also mean the establishment as in possibly even like the record industry or the film industry or the television industry you know you do get these great kind of indie films that are you know blood sweat and tears have gone into it and you know really earnest genuine creative artists have really put everything they've got into it and then you've also got this kind of overproduced triad that was manufactured from day one there's no love in it there's no heart there's no there's no there's no soul in it and um you know, that's kind of the problem a lot of the time with commerciality and with establishment inspired art. You've got no soul, you've got nothing driving the art. And that's the thing. I mean basically this is a it's it's asking you under which liar are you gonna are you gonna serve? You know, what tune are you gonna dance to? Are you gonna be the sort of person that takes their job too seriously and watches Britain's Got Talent and Pop Idol <laughs> or are you going to be the sort of person that lives their life a bit more interestingly doesn't necessarily always get their job done <laughs> uh, might roll out of bed a bit late upon occasion um, but essentially you know lives more for you know trying to find something that's really beautiful not just not just kind of invented um, Albert Camus once said something along the lines of um, you know life is basically or a man's work should be trying to find those one or two images in which his, his heart first opened um, I don't remember it word for word but this idea that you know your life should be about searching out beauty and things that are really important and so much of our lives tend to be kind of ruled by you know punching in and out of a nine to five job that we don't particularly like um, or basically having to put up with a lot of very mediocre entertainment um, I mean I don't really watch a lot of television I watch far more YouTube than I do television and I think it's because the stuff that gets put up on YouTube is infinitely more interesting than television and 
the reason for that is because there's no money in it and people are only doing it because they want to do it because they've got something to say and they want to say it and it just makes it infinitely more interesting than half of the truck that gets on television or the radio or you know any other kind of monetary outlet the cinema um, so yeah so basically the, the reason I say this poem is about the meaning of life it's basically about sorting your priorities out and figuring out how to enjoy your life in a way that's more artistic and creative than necessarily you know you would get under the Apollo regime you know um, although it does say there's dangers in that you know this idea that if Hermes run the world it would be like the Balkans you know you've got to have a bit of authority you've got to have someone in control you just can't take them too seriously um, that's basically the way it works I think anyway uh, that's enough waffle from me um, I hope you've enjoyed my little commentary on my favourite poem and um, if I can be bothered to do another poetry show I'll see you next time thanks <laughs>